Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another garden video. So today we are talking all about hibiscus flowers, both your standard traditional hibiscus. I have a bullet, bullet, ballet slippers hibiscus that needs transplanted because she is in too much shade. She needs a bit more sun. So we are going to be transplanting her. She is three years old, has bloomed a total of two blooms and is still about the size of this box from all the way down in the shade garden to over here in the full sun where she can get her full glorious size. I don't remember her size because like I said, I planted her three years ago, but I believe hibiscus can get really big, like six by six if they're very, very happy. So I'm going to be transplanting her over here to my border of larger plants, including three rows of Sharon's. This is the third one because one of the three from last year did not make it. Um, and rows of Sharon are actually a type of hibiscus. I'm not sure if they are sisters or cousins or just a different variety. They're very similar plants. This one is an Althea, which gets uh, 10 to 12 feet tall by six to seven feet wide if they're very happy. Again, like your traditional hibiscus, these plants love full sun. And I planted three last year. One, just like this, from a box, bare root. One from a plant from my local nursery. Now, the one that didn't make it was one of these, the bare root variety. And honestly, I'm going to say I killed it. It was not any fault of its own. Uh, I planted it. And then the next week, I had put a bucket over top of it to keep my, my yard guy who mows my, my lawn from knocking it over and killing it. Because it's just a little stick in here. It was just a little stick. I knew he would go right over the top of it with the lawning, lawning, with the riding lawn mower. Um, and then I got distracted and I did not take the bucket off and it died from lack of sun because you can't grow under a bucket. There's just no, no help. The other one was in the middle of black landscaping fabric. So he wasn't mowing that area. So I did not put a bucket over it and it is flourishing. So I will show you uh, a little clip here of when I planted all three of these rows of Sharon's last year and I'll link to that video. And now I'm going to give you a close up look at what these plants look like a year later in the ground, both my stick and my plant. And then we're going to get started. We're going to plant this guy where his predecessor died, RIP. Um, and then we are going to transplant that hibiscus. And hopefully this time next year, both plants will be doing much better uh, than where they currently are in a box and in the shade. Let's go. All right, so here is my stick from last year. And as you can see, she is actually very tall, taller than the plant that I had last year. If I stand right next to her, she comes up to my hip. That's really tall. Um, she has three strong branches and is just starting to get wider. So she grew up and now she's growing out. But for a stick from a box, I was very happy with her. She did bloom last year even, so go stick, go. Loving you. And this was the worst of the stick. The good stick up here is the one I killed. So here, as 
excuse the shadows. Um, here is my plant that I planted from the nursery. And you can see, oh, there's a little uh, stuff on there. But in addition to the stuff, there are buds just starting. I love these plants. They, even last year and their first year when they were, you know, like a stick. This one was literally a stick when I planted it. They got covered in buds. They bloomed for such a long time and they were beautiful petals. And I cannot wait until these plants are, you know, 10, six, anywhere more than a foot or two high and covered in petals. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead, redundant much, and plant our other stick. You can actually see where the drip emitter is for last year's plant. So he had everything uh, he needed to succeed, water and sun. I just killed him with my bucket. Oh well, you know, it stinks, but he was $5 and sometimes you gotta, you gotta kill some plants in the journey of learning how to make them grow. So let's go ahead and get everything planted and watered in so they can benefit from the cool hours of the evening before it gets too hot tomorrow. All right, so if I'm going based off of my spacing here, I'd like to put the plant here. Um, but here is our drip, which leads us to this spot. So I'm gonna move her over a little. We want to leave her enough space to really expand that full six to seven feet wide if she wants to. The whole point of this border is to um, get big and bushy and beautiful and block the, the view of the woods behind me. Not necessarily block it, but just stop your eye when you're looking at this half of the garden. Let's go ahead. We're going to cut our landscape fabric in an X. We're going to then cut the cardboard out underneath it because we need to get to the dirt. It is nice and easy to take out after being in here for a little while. Now dig our hole. Keep the fabric back until we're ready for it. attached but I thought it was. There we go. bare root guy isn't going to need much soil but we might as well give him a fluffy base to start with. You can see he is already trying to grow. Let's get him out. See what his roots look like. They look like nothing. We know they do okay because this is what he looked like last year. Put our dirt in the bottom of the hole because that's decent dirt. Got some plant tone in my shake and bake container, so let's toss that in. Now we're gonna plant this guy even with the soil. Mm -hmm. right. Fabric back down, help with the weeds. Get a landscape staple. I'm gonna staple the water right at his base so that he gets constant water. Put the mulch back. 
to shave him. And there we go. He looks like nothing, but he might be up to our waist next year like our other friend. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to prep the space for our other hibiscus and then we will go dig him up so that we can put him immediately in his new home. All right, so this guy is actually doing better this year than all the previous years, and I can see several five or six buds on this guy, which may not bloom now that we're stressing him out and moving him, but in three years. This foot and a half high little guy is the biggest he's ever been. He should be three, four, five feet high, three, four years in. So that's okay. I'm gonna get him moved. And if we had to sacrifice him a little this year, it's not like we were expecting too much anyways. I was not expecting the roots to be so um, big and beautiful with the plant struggling so much. But the biggest root we had to cut out was actually from the tree just going through the hibiscus roots. So I'm going to get this a uh, hole a little bigger and then we'll get them planted. over here when I've not been adding compost to for the last three years. So over there where my dirt was pretty brown, it's because I've been conditioning it for three years. This sandy clay is my natural soil. We're going to get some of it out of here. And if we need to backfill with compost, we'll do that. down a layer of compost and mulch over here this year so you know over time the soil will improve make sure all the roots are in happy in their new home in the dirt Go grab some compost.
just level with the soil. Let's put some mulch back. Let's shade them. All right, we will keep this guy watered really well the next couple days. I actually need to run drip to the front half of my raised beds and this blueberry that we just planted. So I will just run drip to this guy at the same time. He doesn't have a pre-approved drip. <laughs> and we will watch and see how he does. But for now, they are both in. We're gonna go take a break because it is hot. Thanks for watching y'all. See you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.